Hello, everyone, and welcome to Equity Center Design Thinking, New Zealand 10's conference session. This is part one. We have a few norms that we've um, listed here on the screen. Some are to take initiative for one's own learning and make connections with creativity. Do you have any additional norms that you would like to add? Please go ahead and consider them now. My name is Victoria James. I'm the Director of Professional Learning at MindSpark. My email is listed here. Please reach out if you have any questions or would like to follow up after this session. I would love to hear from you. This session was developed in partnership also with Sarah Washbrook with the TENS Council Resource and Professional Learning. Her email is listed here as well. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out to either of us if you have any questions. So MindSpark Learning is a US-based nonprofit driven by the belief that the most impactful path to evolving education is through educators. We just like to take a moment to engage in an indigenous land acknowledgement. Um, we are obviously engaging with this training virtually together, however, MindSpark Learning's offices are in the capital city of the state of Colorado, Denver, and our office physically sits on native Ute land. This is a partnership uh, MindSpark and TENS have cultivated that we are so very proud of and feel honored to be able to share these resources and this series with you. A quick disclaimer is that this is not a curriculum for equity Center design thinking. It is up to you to adapt, modify, and change the content and materials shared here in today's session to best suit your and your students' needs. Our outcomes for today's session are to identify the importance and components and phases of equity Center design thinking, or ECDT, to differentiate between ECDT and design thinking, or DT, embrace the power of designing for extremes, and engage in student and staff facing ECDT challenges and sprints. Here we have MindSpark's approach to problem solving and design. This is how we frame and build each of our sessions, starting with disruption, because we believe that folks learn best when they are a little bit outside of their comfort zone. So we have a graphic organizer for you all that you can access via this bit.ly link here on the screen. Please go ahead and take a moment, type this bit.ly link into your browser and it will bring you to this screen here. So it'll ask you to make a copy with a blue button. Go ahead and click make a copy and then you will see that we have many of the slides and different resources and instructions from our session together on that graphic organizer. Once you make your copy, it is yours to keep and you can type notes uh, as well as jot down uh, thoughts and questions as well. All right, so let's move to our first disruption. So for your mini design sprint disruption, you are tasked with the following. New Zealand restaurateurs need a way to reduce their single use takeaway food containers and compost their food waste so that they can feed their communities, save money and grow their businesses. Based on the limited information we provided you, design a solution for New Zealand restaurateurs that allows for the uh, reduction of single use plastics and food waste composting. Some constraints or needs that we have as well are the solution needs to be low cost, it needs to be sleek and have a functional design, it needs to be COVID safe, and it needs to be sustainable. All right, so you have five minutes to go ahead and engage in a rough sketch of your design. All right, we are going to demo for you a platform where we will ask you after five minutes to share an image of your design. So go ahead, take five minutes. You can jot on a piece of paper or in your notebook. If you'd like to use a virtual sketching platform, you can do so as well. 
You can use Google Drawing, which I will demo for you very quickly. That is also linked in your graphic organizer. So let me show you where to find it. In your graphic organizer, you can find the Google Drawing link here. Click on that link. It will ask you to make a copy. Make your copy, and then you will see that basically anything that you can do with pen and paper uh, physically, you can do virtually with Google Drawing. All right, so if you would like to make some lines, you can do so, you can add some shapes, a whole host of different possibilities, okay, are at your disposal. So again, that is linked in your graphic organizer. You can use pen and paper or another sketching tool, but create a visual representation of your design. You have five minutes, good luck. Now that you've had the time to create your design, we'll go ahead and ask that you upload an image. You can take a photo, a screenshot, what have you, and go ahead and add it to our shared Jamboard. So Jamboard is linked here in our graphic organizer. You can add your prototype to this page. We look forward to seeing your prototype designs. All right, now we invite you to engage in reflection. So how did that disruption feel? What did you notice and what did you learn? Take a moment to consider and reflect on your responses to these questions. So moving forward, you just went through a very quick design sprint. So we went through the design process together, but let's go ahead and backfill and solidify your understanding of design thinking. So we have linked in your graphic organizer this next piece of information, which is to create a visual representation of the process we just walked through. So this is also linked in your graphic organizer. Go ahead and click on this link to make a copy and then think back to the design challenge that we just went through. So consider, you know, what order did we go in perhaps? So make your copy. And then decide again, you're creating a visual representation of the process that we just went through, creating a solution for our New Zealand restaurateurs. So if you think we started with ID8 and then moved to potentially prototyping, Go ahead and switch up that order. It is totally up to you. This is just to practice, to get some experience. Take the next few minutes to create a visual representation of the process we just walked through. So what is equity center design thinking? <laughs> Excuse me. So we had you order the hexagons earlier. But this is not always a linear process. We want to highlight that it is often cyclical. So what makes ECDT special is its focus on equity. So in an ideal situation, designers, they are constantly noticing and reflecting on personal biases, positional power, and experiences. Additionally, sometimes you'll ideate and prototype then realize that you need to go back and you need to empathize with the intended audience before testing. So you may prototype and test and then also go back to your prototype to improve it and test again. So throughout this whole process, you should always be noticing and reflecting on your own perspective and ultimately your own experiences and biases you bring to the design table. So this is, again, it is not a linear process. Equity-centered design thinking is rather cyclical and iterative, but ultimately this is how we get to the most equitable and sustainable solutions. So what other DT models exist? So we have design thinking, 
that is predominantly credited to the design school at Stanford University or the D school as it's commonly called. We also have the MIT Creative Learning Spiral and IDEO's Design Thinking for Educators Toolkit, as well as a model the engineering design process from NASA. Further, we have the New Zealand design process. Te tu kanga, hoa hoa fa kato. So this also is an example of the design process. All right, so we are gonna just do a quick overview of how you all engaged in the equity center design thinking phases during our mini design sprint. So as we go through each phase, please keep in mind that this is a quick overview and doesn't capture all of the elements of each phase in the design process. So each of our uh, webinars that we've produced previously in our series with TENS explores each phase more in depth and I would encourage everybody to check those out. All right, so you engaged in the empathy phase when you observed the realities and the needs of New Zealand restaurateurs. For the define phase, we defined the problem for you when we told you that restaurateurs, uh, what their needs were and what the constraints consisted of. You engaged in the ideate phase when you worked independently and collaboratively to come up with ideas for a solution to the New Zealand restaurateurs uh, problem and supported their needs. So in our work, we ultimately sometimes use this phase, we call it functional modeling to represent the ideate phase. So you prototyped when you built out your ideas on Google Drawing or when you sketched them in your notebook. And while you didn't pitch your solutions or implement feedback, in the future, you could test your solutions with stakeholders via a pilot program. You should be reflecting all along the design process and it could engage in the reflect phase after that pilot program to reflect on and implement user feedback. All right, so we are coming toward the end of part one of this conference session and we invite you to consider this connection circle question. What excites you the most about equity-centered design thinking. Consider your response to this question and we will take it with us into part two. Thank you all so much for your participation and engagement in this session. Again, my name is Victoria James. My email is listed here. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. I would love to hear from you. And as I mentioned previously, MindSpark, we have partnered with TENS to create an entire uh, free series on equity center design thinking. Um, these courses are completely free and accessible via our online platform. They are linked in your graphic organizer. If you would like to check them out, you can go ahead and click on that link and register. Again, those are completely free and they delve into each of the equity center design thinking phases in much greater detail. Again, thank you all so much for your time, your participation and engagement this evening. We appreciate it. We would now like to take the time to ask for your advice and feedback via our evaluation. So I will go ahead and demo this evaluation for us now. So please go ahead and type in this bit.ly link into your internet search browser and you'll be taken to our feedback form. So please go ahead, select myself as your facilitator. Go ahead and answer a few quick questions about your experience for today's session. I'm just gonna write test as an example. Hit submit. And then to record your attendance, we wanna make sure that your feedback and your advice is anonymous, but we wanna make sure that you have the opportunity to record your attendance to get credit for your participation during today's session and that will take you to our attendance tracker we'll just ask you to type in for the session today nz tens october conference part one then just answer a few other quick questions 
um, and you are all set. Thank you all so much. I also want to just briefly highlight another course series that we have for you all that is, again, completely free, developed with MindSpark. That is our courses around artificial intelligence, which are also linked in your graphic organizer. You can click on that link further down. There it is. So here's our teachable courses. And here is the AI courses. Again, they are completely free and we welcome you to check them out. You can access them all on demand. Thank you all so much.